Hello. Okay, hi Givers, uh, this is uh, Dennis from uh, Give Asia. I have here with me today Tian, and uh, Tian is a very responsible uh, employer. Why did I say that? Because that um, his helper, uh, Juvel, was alive and kicking, I heard like five days ago. And uh, you know, yesterday they started the campaign for her because she's actually admitted in the hospital and things get a worse turn this morning that just happened to know that she had just passed away. So right now what they're doing is that uh, to fundraise for her medical bills and as you know that um, domestic helpers in Singapore only have a very limited uh, payout for their insurance. But uh, let's hear from Tian what actually what happened. Tian, how are you feeling today? Um, it's a, a bit to be in shock to yep, tell okay. you. I mean, uh, given what has happened in the last 48 hours, so mm. it's a very trying time. Okay. I mean, what just happened was um, my helper, Jovil, uh, yep. who has been asked since January this year, okay. she's only 33 years old. Right. Uh, so Friday night, she started experiencing some vomiting so we thought maybe mm -hmm. she had a stomach flu okay so she you know took some um, home medication rested next morning she continued to work okay uh, like normal yeah um, and then on Sunday she even went out with uh, on her day off but okay in the afternoon she came back because she said she was not feeling well so I said mm -hmm. we better go rest I mean mm -hmm. you know just you know rest and then we can go see a doctor if you want so but when she rested for the rest of the day, Sunday night, my dad decided better take her to the doctor because she was uh, feeling quite uncomfortable. Uh. Yep. She didn't have any fever or she was just not able to eat and just wanted to keep throwing up. So brought her to the doctor. Doctor diagnosed said, okay, probably stomach flu, gave her a jab and mm. some antibiotics. Okay. So she came back, stepped through the night. And, um, you know, I live with my parents, so my parents also have a helper, so, you know, she was taking care of her. And then next morning, we, we checked on her, and um, she she was still quite weak. Okay. So, you know, we said rest throughout the day, because, you know, when you throw out and you don't eat, we thought, you know, it's just naturally... Just Dehydrate, yeah. That we had. Yes. So that takes a couple of days to get over. So on Tuesday morning, her condition did not improve much, so my dad said better bring her to the doctor again. Right. To check. So we brought her to the same doctor, mm. um, GP. Yep. And the GP looked at her and said, test her blood pressure. Her blood pressure was very low. Mm. And heartbeat was kind of low, like, you know, 40, 50. Oh. Yeah, so that was also the doctor said, bring the hospital right away. So we brought her right away to Mount Alvernia. Okay. So when we reached Mount Alvernia, the doctor looked at her and said she needs to get her heartbeat up, blood pressure up. So they gave her some drugs. Yes. And needed to do this procedure called uh, insertion of a temporary pacemaker. Pacemaker? Yeah. She has a heart problem? No, no. but because her blood pressure was so low, they okay. felt her heart need a bit of help. So they put I see. in a, a, it's a temporary wire okay. that acts like a pacemaker. So, but okay. they couldn't do it at Mount Alvernia. Mm. So I was like, okay, they need to bring her to Mount, uh, Mount E okay. to do this procedure. So of course, you know, we said, let's do it. So they, yep. she got, they put her on an ambulance, brought her here. Mm. On Tuesday at about 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, after they inserted the, the temporary pacemaker, okay. she, uh, put, they put her in ICU. I see. So once she got to ICU, I talked to the doctor, the doctor said that uh, this was about, you know, lunch time. Mm. The doctor said that they're not sure what happened because it seems like she has some heart issues but they're also not sure if, if she may be having some organs issue because when the, the heart is not beating very fast and the pressure is low, maybe it's not su supply It's not oxygen supplying organs. oxygen, yes, correct. So, but, so they have to check, so they did all the scan, all the check, so they checked the liver, they had to mm. do the, the, what do you call, uh, a stomach scan, and they had to do the actually to check the lungs, because okay. her breathing also wasn't very good. Right. So they put her on oxygen and all that stuff, so uh, the thing that was kind of my problem was, she, they said that she could have multiple organ failure. Multiple organ failure. Wow. Multiple organ failure. So well, like, wow. is that possible? Because yeah, she was she was still fine. like alive and kicking, and uh, you know, yeah, so like we the were family. Like, how how is this possible? The doctor also doesn't know. 
I said, okay. is it, uh, she said it could be a virus infection, but I said she's at home with us. Yeah. We're all fine and she hasn't gone out. So they said they don't know. So they said the virus could have uh, impacted her heart mm. and all this. And nobody knows because the reason they said that's viral infection because her white blood cell markers was very high. Oh. So when your white, mark, white, cell, white, white blood, blood cell markers are high, yeah. that means there's a virus attacking you. But mm. she also didn't have a fever. Because usually if you have a fever means you're trying to fight the virus. Yes. So the doctor um, were not sure what to do. Then they told me, okay, to diagnose a case, he she they may need a team of doctors because they will have heart doctor, right? Lungs, yes, kidney, they have liver, different, all uh, different specialists. Certain, yes, correct. So they asked me what do I want to do. I'm like, ah, I so don't know what to do. Because I mean this you're talking I, about. I, I, I guess most important thing major, to, right? yeah, most important thing to you is that uh, is that she will recover, right? Yeah, so I asked what are the chance of recovery. They mm. say uh, they have to do checks. Checks and you know. So they started I'll see. Yeah. main thing was to get her, her heartbeat in, in, in going. So they managed mm. the heartbeat then the, the breathing. So they started inserting um, this tube in her. Okay. Because when she was breathing oxygen it wasn't going to go it wasn't going in because her lungs were starting to get water. I see. So, so they inserted a tube okay. and then they done the test. They they started pumping oxygen. Mm. And then they did all kind of different tests, put all kind of medication, I mean. And uh, this morning she didn't then, make it lah. And then the, the, I came on Monday night to see yeah. her. Tuesday morning she was uh, still you know, they were still doing treatment. Mm. And then um, because the organs were failing I guess and then my Wednesday morning she passed away. Oh, okay. Wednesday morning. Just like that. That Just was like yesterday. That. Yesterday. Yesterday morning. So today we had to bring her to the um, mock hmm. at SGH. Right. To do a post mortem. Okay. And um, no, sorry, she passed away this morning this because morning. she came here on Tuesday. She yep. stayed one night Wednesday, whole day of treatment on Wednesday, and then this morning, it's okay, it's Thursday okay. morning. I understand how you feel right now because I guess you are still devastated. By yeah, that. It's, it's, one week ago, Thursday, Everything she was, was there. Okay. Yeah. Today, <sighs> her body is. Being so sorry prepped. for the loss. But I guess, um, I guess right now the most important thing is that um, they are doing the. Um, they're, they're actually at the mock and they're, they're doing the biopsy to understand yeah. what is the cause of the, um, the, the death, right? Yeah. Okay. And uh, I mean, there is still some outstanding bills from the hospital, right? Correct. Okay. So, to how much is the outstanding bill right now, approximately? So, the bill, total bill, I think, came out to be well, between twenty five to 30000 Okay. Uh, the insurance hopefully can cover about, you know, 15000 right? Mm. And hopefully, you know, we're we'll still looking at the campaign is to raise some money to cover those uh, excess bills. Yep. The thing I would also like to do is, because when I, I called the parents, mm. because one of the things that I was thinking when she was going through it was to inform the parents and see if they can come down to visit her. I see. The unfortunate thing is that they don't, they don't have a passport. Okay. So they just said, um, you know, they have to accept it. So, I mean, mm. she came to work. For me, only in January this year. Yep. And yep. fortunately, she was still in Philippines for a year before she came back. So she mm. spent time. So I'm just thinking if we can raise some money for their family and their side of the expenses, mm. just to let them have it, I think it would be nice too. So yeah, just thinking about that. It's just uh, unfortunate that uh, you know another uh, human life is lost. But then, uh, you know, uh, it's actually, uh, you're actually doing a good thing to trying to help to, you know, to, uh, think of her parents also. Mm. And also try to, you know, raise the funds uh, to help repay the medical fees. Mm. So, give us out there, have a heart, even though that uh, Jovel is no longer with us. But then, uh, let's try and help out Tian with the uh, medical bills, outstanding medical bills, as well as, uh, you know, to raise uh, some money for her parents, which I think they are, they should be in shock and uh, totally very, um, very hurt, I guess. So, you see the link there, please click on it, and uh, no amount is actually too small to help. 
Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye for now.